This is the future. When you asked a veteran right now if he or she can still recognize Warframe in terms of gameplay, they will say that if it weren't for the Parker and Warframes, then they won't know Warframe anymore. For years, some are complaining that the game is unrecognizable anymore and that it's not the Warframe that they have played 10 years ago. They say that this is cue bad thing as digital extremes are turning Warframe into something else but, let me ask you this, would Warframe survive this long if the developer did not do what they did? Would there still be players left if Warframe stayed as Warframe? Let me know your opinion in the comment section below. You see, live service games are modeled like this, and instead of just focusing on the present state of the game, the developer needed to implement something to stir up the meta and let players experience something that they have never experienced before. The beginning of the evolution was when they announced the first open world which are Plains of Eidolon. During these times, Warframe needed something to interest players as we all know how the content is repetitive in this game. That's why when they released Planes of Eidolon, many were amazed that Warframe can be an open world and that there were endless possibilities after the first open world. And that is why Digital Extremes kept milking the open world concept because we players are consuming it. However, there comes a point wherein players thought that it was just content islands and then they needed to add a new feature so that players won't get bored. It was during those times also that we players are asking for too many reworks for Warframes so the developer decided to let us rework our Warframe with the help of the Helminth system. The Helminth system was another feature that revolutionized Warframe, it did not play by the playbook, and it's an out of the box thinking from the developer to somehow disperse all that talks about reworking every Warframe, some may not like it because, for them, it takes away the essence of the uniqueness of a Warframe, but honestly, the Helminth system made the game fun and there are many unique builds right now because of this feature, it did not just help those Warframes that needed rework, but also made non-meta Warframes popular. Then, they expanded the Helminth system with Arch and Shards and there are other possibilities that Digital Extremes can do with the Helminth system. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Before the Helminth system, there was the Railjack system which could be the update that made Warframe even more famous, only to get bombarded with negative reviews from the community because of the horrid implementation of the update, it was a dream update by many but did not get any traction from the player base since it was full of bugs and incomplete at release. It was months before they finally fix and make Railjack good, but it was too late and it was already labeled by players as one of the worst updates in Warframe, it may be good right now, and it's one of the most rewarding missions, but it would take a lot of time and effort just to finish one Railjack mission. Not to mention that the early grind for Railjack was absurd. Railjack leaves a lot of negatives that Digital Extremes weren't able to save the game mode, and right now, it's like space, it's empty and only a few players play the game mode. Now, it's time for another evolution of Warframe and they have started this with the new war and continued with Duveri Paradox. But mind you, the Drifter only open world, and the new Incarnan weapons aren't the ones that will change Warframe, no, these are just features that will be embedded in Warframe, we play it for a while, and then back to the old star chart missions. What's intriguing with the upcoming Duveri Paradox update is that Digital Extremes will allow new players to choose whether to play the Duveri Paradox or the normal Warframe where we start from the Awakening quest. Why would this impact Warframe? Well, the other side is a new game and not Warframe at all which is slow paced, and more toward impact moves. The other side, which is the Warframe kind of side is all about movement, Parker and stuff that we know how should Warframe works and play out. Now, I have been telling this for a very long time, and I will say it again in this video. Juveri Paradox is the preparation for Soulframe, Digital Extremes upcoming Soulsborne game and, they are really pushing it by allowing new players to experience it early. If somehow Juveri Paradox will succeed, then Soulframe will do the same but, I don't know if players will be more keen in playing Duveri Paradox knowing that it's an open world and, we all know that after a few months, open world often turns into content islands wherein after farming all the necessary stuff for the new things in the update, it will be abandoned just like the rest of the open world available in the game. This is quite risky if you ask me and Digital Extremes are gambling it all, which will eventually make or break Warframe, 
Don't get me wrong, I like what I am seeing with the new Soul Frame game and it is turning out to be an impressive game but, I just hope that Digital Extremes are not planning to put more Soul Frame content in Warframe because they are not in the same universe and the way that they are played is different. I am hoping for the best for Duveri Paradox but, I hope that this will be the last time we see any Cal Mission or Drifter only open world. Digital Extremes hinted that they will be focusing more on the expansion of the new war content so, I just hope we really get the real Warframe war this time. Now, I would love to know your opinion regarding this topic, let's discuss this in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, Squad Leader signing off.